As a church, we believe in grow, all of us growing in a healthy way, okay? Now, if you remember the last time I spoke, anyone, what did I speak on? Come on, Charlotte, anyone? Charlotte, what, what did I speak on? <laughs> speak louder, please. God's gym, okay? How I many of you remember that? You can't say that. That's so good. All right, no worries. God's gym, I spoke about how we can be spiritually healthy. How we can exercise our heart, our mind, our soul, our body, right? So that we can be spiritually healthy. And that's not the only aspect that we want to see all of you grow. We, only, we not only want you to grow spiritually fit or healthy, but we also want you to be fit and healthy in every other area of your life, okay? So I, this morning, I want to address on, on that a little bit today. You know, you know, I don't know how your new year has been there. It's all, almost a month is over right now. You stepped into second month. I don't know how you feel, but I'm reminded of a Peanuts cartoon, Peanuts cartoon, okay? It says like this, two, two characters, all Peanuts has two characters, Lucy and Charlie Brown. Okay, so Lucy comes once um, grumbling to Charlie Brown about the awful New Year she has been having. She complained that problems abounded. She felt that difficulties were around every corner. Then she said, I don't think this is a new year at all. I think we've been stuck with a used year. I don't know how many feel like that today. You feel like, okay, this doesn't say anything new here. It's the same all my life. Same thing. It will always be the same, my friends, because we carry a lot of things from the past. We carry a lot of things from the past, okay? Unless we learn to deal with that, you will always have a used year. That's for sure. So every time you can celebrate New Year's, Day, every new new month. This is happy new month, by the way. Happy new Sunday today. And happy new day tomorrow. We can all celebrate that. But if you're still carrying things from the past, that's what we do. We carry a lot of baggage from the past. And we don't know how to deal with it. Because of that, you always feel like a used year and you feel you're stuck. Because you never dealt with what happened in the past. So this morning, I really want to talk to us, okay, about the baggages that we carry. I'm talking about baggages. I don't know about you. When I travel somewhere, I'm an overpacker. I tend to pack a couple of extra clothes, even though I won't, no, I won't need it, but I'll always have an extra pair of clothes. You know, some of us are like that, right? Anyone agree with me? Yeah? You always think, what if that happens? What if I spill something? That's what happened one time, you know, when we were traveling to the U.S. Uh, with my baby, with Samuel, and we didn't put extra clothes in our carry-on, and Samuel puked on us. You can imagine our flight on the flight, every, we're smelling pukish all the time, right? And so not a good experience. So t I tend to pack a little bit more than what is required. But my wife's the other way, right? She wants to pack light. Right? She said, that's enough. I can manage with that. Right? So there are different kinds of people, right, in this room. You have, either you're an overpacker or underpacker. But the baggages that I'm talking about is nothing to do with our physical baggages. I'm going to go deeper today to something that we carry, which we cannot see, though. Right? I want to talk about emotional baggages, you know? Emotional baggage. What is baggage? What's the definition of baggage? Something we pack or stuff other things into in order to take them with us. And we carry these baggages. One of the baggages we carry is called a spiritual baggage. Okay? Any area of your life that is unresolved and that has been pushed deep inside and hidden and is a hindrance to your spiritual life. You know, sometimes we carry spiritual baggages, you know, because we are disappointed with God. Come on. Anyone disappointed with God? That's me. So I'm lifting my hand. So you can lift your hands boldly. Disappointed with God? I am. So many times in my life, I've been disappointed with God. Don't tell me you haven't been. Man, you guys are perfect. Disappointed with God, you know? 
We have that baggage. Then we come to emotional baggage. We carry so much emotions, unhealthy emotions from our past that stop or encumber one's freedom, progress, or development. Okay? We carry emotional baggage. So I want you to know, it doesn't matter who you are today, whether you are 10 years old, whether you are 25 years old, whether you are 50 years old, or whether you are 80 years old. I hope you don't have any 80-year-old people over here. But it doesn't matter what your age is, all of us carry baggages. All of us carry baggages. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have a baggage. <laughs> you have a baggage. Probably you don't like it because you can't see it. But right inside of us, each one of us carry some sort of baggage. Now in the congregation, I believe there are three kinds of people, okay, who carry different kinds of baggages. Different kind of baggage. Let me explain that. Some of us are like this trunk, have a baggage like this trunk. You've been accumulating things over the past years. And you didn't know how to handle them. You didn't go to counseling. You didn't talk to anybody about that. But what you do, you put it in a trunk like this. And sometimes things pop up from your trunk. You don't have to open it. They'll come out automatically. Things that you accumulated over your past. Maybe when you were a kid, your dad promised you something. Maybe he promised you a bicycle. Or he promised you a trip that will take you someplace, and it never happened. Every year is the same thing. I'll take you for your birthday today. Hmm. Didn't happen. So there is disappointment. You put that there. You never know how to deal with it. You left it there. Put it in the trunk. Disappointment. And some of us probably in your school, in your college, you wanted to be part of the sports team, you wanted to be part of the cricket team, or the football team, whatever team. And you wanted to play, and you go there, and you know what happens? They said, oh, you are not selected. Right? Then you feel rejected. Maybe, maybe that's not you. I never was never into sports, though. I only like to watch sports. Played a little bit of cricket, but I was never into sports. But you know, sometimes you know, you grow up, you find other things that you want to do. And as a kid, you grew up, you know, you see those guys up on stage, and you want to be like one of them. And probably you carried that guitar to Sunday school, or carried the guitar to worship services. And you know? kids like to bring their, and they want to see the people on stage, and they just want to imitate them. And probably in your heart of hearts, you wanted to be some, someone like Ben. But that never did happen. You got baggage. Maybe you wanted to lead worship or sing on stage. So you know, you go by that karaoke microphone. Right? Have you seen that one of those very glitzy ones? Carry a microphone, and every day at home you put a song and you imitate that, sing that, and you somehow you thought, okay, that's what, that will help me to qualify, to be part of the team. And you go and they, they ask you for an audition. You didn't realize that you have to give an audition. And they give, you have to give an audition. And in the audition they say, man, you can't even hold a note together. You, you are not fit for this. So you are rejected and hurt. You got baggage. You move on in life and you come to a place and you fall in love. You fall in love. And everything's going very well, a couple of years, one year later, suddenly you realize the person that you're seeing doesn't love you anymore. They wanted an upgrade. 
So they will look, they're, they're going after someone. I'll send you here. here. Hard, right? And the day comes when you have to split or break up, when you have a conversation, okay, this is not gonna work, okay. And you say, here, he's your dog. And he's the sweater that you gave me. Baggage. And over the years, you accumulated so much baggage. It's not only about this, there's so many things that can go on and on. All right? Baggage. We accumulate things. We don't know how to deal with that. And we left it. And you know what happens? You know what happens? This will come. Time and again, this will pop. There's sometimes you feel like God is asking you to move ahead. You want to move on in life. God wants you to go to a high, higher level. But somehow, whenever you want to do that, you're always pulled by the things that you're carrying. Pulled by the things that you carry. Some of us here have things full of trunks. You never went to counseling. You never spoke about it. But you're carrying it along. That's drunk people. But there are some other people, okay? Get everything out. So I'm not sure I probably give, gifted this to your, someone that you love. Got back. And then some of us are suitcase people. I mean, you're not there. You handle some of them very well. Right, you handle some of them very well, but you still have certain things that you carry along. Now you are hurt by that church. And you're in church often. And maybe probably you jumped here today. And said, Pastor, oh, hello, I'm here for the first time and I'm coming. What happened there? And I don't want to say, you know, you're going to da 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 You have baggage. Some of us, yeah, left some of them. You handle some of the situations, but there are still some things that are still pulling along you. And every time you want to go, maybe, you know, just things come up in special occasions, like when you go to a wedding and you see your cousin over there. And you know you haven't been in good terms. Or don't speak to them. Right? Things come out. Baggage. Maybe you're divorced. I know it's hard. But you have that baggage. And sometimes that's what we do. We carry baggage from one relationship to another relationship. Because we never deal with it. That's a suitcase baggage. You dealt with some... Right? But you still have to deal with some more. But there's another category of baggages. It's called a backpacker. I mean, you, you dealt with that. You dealt with that. You dealt with certain things. It, you are able to manage it. Manage it. So some of us can manage it. Okay, you're carrying it along very well. You come to church, you smile. Yeah, all of us smile, by the way. Everyone is carrying any kind of baggage, you smile. Oh, everything is all right. Right? Some of us are, oh, I can manage this. It's okay, it's lighter. I can manage this. And we learn to manage things in our lives. But I'm here to tell you today, God is not interested in, in you managing your baggage, but he's interested in setting you free from your baggage. Today, I want us to go out of this place knowing that you can go free from everything that you are carrying from your past. There are so many things that we carry you know, from our past, and that's pulling us back, not moving us on in the things of God. 
not moving, helping us to go to the next level. God has some amazing things for you this year, but if you're still stuck, if you're still carrying baggages, the trunk, the suitcase, the backpack, I'll tell you, it's never going to help you progress the way that God wants you to progress. And today, I want to talk about one of the things that we carry. One of the things that we carry from the past. And the thing that, one of the things that we carry, which is very common, is the thing called offense. Shout out offense. Come on. Offense. An offense is such a powerful tool of the enemy. Today I want to talk a little bit about offense, okay? And I want to go to continue next, next week too, because I'm not going to finish everything that I want to talk about it. Offense is something that really traps us. You know, the points that I'm going to share are from my another pastor, mentor, Pastor Dave Patterson, and I learned a lot of stuff from him growing through times of leading worship. So he has been like a mentor to us in some ways. So, and I, he begins to highlight certain things it's so beautiful, and I want to bring that up, what he, what he has to say about offense. And he talks about offense, and he says he brings out five things about offense. Five things about offense, okay? I want to talk about that. Number one, offenses are inevitable. Okay, offenses are inevitable. They really are. Now, now I'm going to bring out a verse from the Bible, which we have never seen on a fridge magnet, as a magnet or a bookmark, as a promise card. You'll never seen that, but this is something powerful. And Jesus is actually talking about this. In Luke chapter 17, verse 1, he says like this. Can you read that with me? It says, then he said to the disciples, what do you say? It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. Now, this is Jesus, by the way. And he says, in other words, he's saying, offenses will come. It is impossible. That means in your lifetime, you will all, offenses will always come your way. You cannot live a life free of offense, by the way. No one can. Offenses come along our way. They can come in different ways, okay? Different ways. And if Jesus clearly says, it is impossible that no offenses should come. But he said, whoa, should not be that someone who's offending. But woe to those. He said, it is impossible. So as I said, whether you, whichever status of your life is, 10 years, 12 years, 25, 30, 40, 70, you will have offenses come your way all the time. There's no foolproof guarantee that you won't be offended. So take heart. <laughs> offenses are going to come your way. Jesus says, it is impossible, okay, that no offense should come, okay? Number two, offenses are a trap. Offenses are a trap, okay? So many people don't understand this. Offense is, should not be an op option for us, okay? It, it is deception, okay? It changes around in our lives, okay? The word, the Hebrew word, Greek, sorry, the Greek word is a word called scandalon, which actually comes where, where the, our word scandal comes from. And it says like this, says the trigger of a trap on which the bait is placed. Now, I don't know about you. In our home, sometimes we have this phenomenon called rats. Anyone experience rats in your home? Okay. Recently, we, we had some rats in our home. And suddenly, you see, this one is running around. I said, where did that come to? We live on the first floor, by the way. How did they even come to the first floor? And you see the rats. So what do we do? We want to deal with the rats. What do we do? We put a glue trap, the mouse pad. But you know the rats become very smarter nowadays. 
They don't get stuck to the glue trap anymore. They know how to navigate that. So what do we have to do? We got to have go the old fashioned way. You get it? Trap. Right that trap. So the trap has something called a bait. You have to bait the rat. So you put a piece of cheese, tomato, a piece of coconut, right? For the rat to come and take a bite of it. And you keep it in the night, the rat comes in, smells something good, and it runs and takes a bite of it. What happens after that? The trap gets on and it's trapped. Offense is like that trap. It's a trap of the enemy. All the enemy wants you is to take a bite of it. And it'll trap you, put you in a cage. Offense is the trap of the enemy, the bait of the enemy. It comes through your emotions, your self-justification. I deserve better. Take a bite of it. People don't treat you better. I think I deserve better. You take a bite of it and you set yourself into a trap. When we are offended, my friend, we go after the bait and we get trapped on. So many of us get offended for different things. Some of you probably get offended because of the way I speak. Possible. You might say, no, pastor. But I know in your heart you get offended sometimes about some things that I say. Because sometimes they touch. And you, friends say something and you get hurt. Offense. It's all a trap. Maybe you came offended to church today. You were offended with your husband or your wife or your kids. Come on. Anyway, you see, there's always room for offense. So offense is a trap. The third thing is, offense opens the door to deception. It opens the door to deception. It's not only you, you get offended, but it leads you down to a rabbit, in a rabbit's trail. Deception. You know, Jesus talks about, it says, in the last days, okay, there will be a lot of signs of the end times, okay? And when people begin to talk about Christ, so many people will be offended, okay? In Matthew chapter 24, Verse said it says like this. It says, and then many will be offended. And what happens when someone is offended? This is what happens. It says, will betray one another. And it goes on to say, they will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Now you see what happens Offense is such a trap, it brings deception in our lives. It leads us to a place of lawlessness. And it says, the love of many will grow cold. Now, who is, who is he talking about? He's not talking about people who didn't believe in Christ. He's talking about people who believe in Christ. The love of many will grow cold. The Bible clearly says, one of the distinguishing factors of any disciple of Christ is their love. By your love, they will know you. And the Bible says, when you get trapped into offense, it says, your love will grow cold. And that's not a good place to be in today. Some of us, our hearts have grown cold. And God wants to set us free today. So many times we pick, we get offended so easily. It says, many will be deceived. The rate of offense is ever increasing in churches. In believers, by the way, we're not even talking about the world. In people, I mean, you, someone says something, someone says something, you get offended. We can get so offended so quickly. It's not good. And I want to encourage you today. Don't get into the trap of offense and let your love grow cold. When I'm passionately in love with Jesus and on fire for him, I'll tell you, offenses will be released. Offenses will be in. So many of us are offended because you've been treated unjustly. I understand that. 
You've been treated unfairly in your workplace probably, maybe in your family, unjustly, and it wounded you. And you know what happens when you treat unjustly, you go, what, what happens is that instead of going speaking to the concerned person, you speak around. You speak around. You go to the social media and you post something, ah, da 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 da, and 101 people comment on something that they don't, they are not even involved. What's that talking about? It's saying they're taking the offense of the other one. And that's what we do so many times in our life. You're passing by, you see this comment, eh? How could they do that? And don't even know the other side of the story. And you hear someone, okay, someone comes to you and says, you know what, she, had, she, 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 she said like this, she said like this, that took me out of the team, you know what? And what happens? Someone who was not even involved in that takes on your offense now. And they get into the trap. You know, if someone's talking offense, it's better to tell them, hey, stop it. I don't want to be trapped into that offense, into your offense. Offense. Deception, it's a trap. The next one I want to talk about offense is, you know, offense are mostly inflicted by those who are closest to. If it was someone else, probably to define. You know, the psalmist talks about it in Psalm chapter 55, verse 12, he says like this, Psalm 55 verse 12 says, if an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God, as we walked among the worshippers. Offense comes from those who we are very close to. So marriage is a hotbed for offense. It's a very hard bit of offense. No one can offend you more than the person you love the most. It's difficult to take an offense from them. And sometimes it escalates because we didn't know how to deal with it. We don't know how to deal with it. No one can wound quite as much as your spouse. An attitude, a thought, Something comes out of them, you know, in a heated moment. And you don't go to counseling, you don't talk about it, and you let it simmer, and it just takes hold of you. It's a trap. Pulls you into deceit, and the love will get cold. Come on, tell me. Talk. The love gets cold, because you never learn to deal with that. Last one. Offenses, Okay are inevitable. Carrying them is a choice. No one is forcing you to carry an offense. You choose to carry that offense. No one is pushing it you down. Maybe they treated you unfairly. Maybe they treated you unjustly. Maybe you didn't like the divorce. Unjust. Not called for. I know the pain of it. I know it might be hurting you, to, to you. It's inevitable sometimes. But carrying them is a choice you and I need to make. Will make. Have to make. You don't have to carry them, by the way. You see, those who hurt you in the past cannot hurt you in the future unless you hold on to that pain through resentment and forgiveness. If you hold on to that, you will allow the other person to keep hurting you again and again. It's your choice. Today, it's your choice. You can carry it in your life, or you can drop it here and say, God, I want to deal with it. I want to deal with it. Hebrews chapter 12 says something like this. Hebrews chapter 12. 
says chapter verse 1 12 chapter verse 12 chapter verse 1 says therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight the weight is pulling you down and the sin which so easily ensnares us or traps you and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us and it goes on to say it says looking unto jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of god so how do we deal with this it says look at look at jesus look at jesus look at jesus you know if you look at the life of jesus he had ample opportunities to be offended okay he had ample opportunities to be offended imagine as a baby someone was trying to kill you right imagine one day he was preaching and people took stones to throw at him his very own disciple chose to betray him offense he could have taken offense of that he said man i'm trying to save the world here i'm trying to save all of you this guy come on look at this guy he comes and just killing it all together he could have got offended you know in john chapter 10 talks about one time jesus as he was preaching the religious leaders came and began to argue about things and question him about his authority and every authority and they were always trying to find fault him he could have been offended by any one of this man what am i trying to do why are people are so offended he could have said peter or john come on deal with these guys i can't deal with them anymore he could have got offended in so many times in his life when his own father and mother forgot him leaving him in the temple so look unto jesus you know in john chapter 10 interestingly it says verse 39 says they tried yet again to arrest him and he says but he slipped through their fingers sometimes we got to learn to do that we got to slip out of all opinions of people slip out of all hurts right slip out of all offenses say i'm not going to be moved by it I have a great calling. God has called me for greater things in my life. I'm not going to be pulled back my by offenses. Jesus said he just slipped through. He said I'm going to find my way out and he left. He could have been offended. He could have continued arguing with them. That's not going to help them in any way. He said okay. I'm not going to let it go and bother me. I'm going to slip away. Today you have a choice to make. You can carry it or you can slip it away. here in god you can experience his healing power when you choose to give it to him and say god here am i broken wounded but i don't want to carry it anymore i don't want to carry it anymore i want to live free come on all our eyes closed even as the team comes up eyes closed let the spirit of god speak to you today so many things that you may maybe come into your mind today come on let go let go let go mm let go let go you carried it long some of you carried it long it's been destroying your life you can't move move on in your life today you can experience the power of god in your life because if you choose to let it go god's spirit is going to come and help you to heal that one today thank you jesus
that's you today if that's you today i just wanted to stand up wherever you are said i'm going to d- i'm done with this now i want to deal with it i want to let it go lifted up in surrender if that's you today Just talk to God today. Lay all your offenses at His feet and say, Holy Spirit, would you heal me? Come on, you can name them. You know. Just... Holy Spirit, come on. Do your work, Holy Spirit, in each one of our lives today. Breathe on us fresh, oh God. No more carrying baggages. No more, oh God. God, give us the grace to deal with that. Give us the grace. Give us the grace, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let, let Him heal your heart today. Let him heal your heart today. Just receive it. He's just touching you today. Just receive it. God, we are so grateful for your work in each one of our lives, oh God. Today, we choose to put our offenses, oh God. Put our offenses at you, God. At your cross. And say, God, would you please heal us. Heal our wounds. Heal our hurts, oh God. Heal our wounds, heal our hearts, oh God. Help us to have grace. Grace for one another, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that your work would continue in our lives, oh God. Throughout this week, oh God, I pray we will be handing over things to you, oh God. That we are not supposed to carry. So we submit ourselves, surrender ourselves to you. Holy Spirit, would you heal us? Make us whole once again. Come on, once again, I surrender. Thank you, Jesus.
God, we commit ourselves to you once again today. And Lord, help us with our offenses. Help us not to set ourselves into a trap, oh God. And I pray, help us to overcome them through the power of your Holy Spirit. And even as we move out of this place, that your peace, your presence would go with us, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.